All praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Akakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalawam to the elect to the nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson going into how there's a lot of, um, there's pretty much just a lot of bugged out people out there, man, and they, they don't really know the Bible, but they want to try and teach the Bible instead of reading it and learning it for themselves and, and having a foundation of knowledge themselves. To where they're actually able to teach right because they don't even like here it is we're very close to seeing your Shai return to the earth but you got some people out there that think that they're that they're trying to question the bible and they're trying to say stuff like oh paul was a false prophet oh the, the um the the mark of the beast is paul's doctrine right oh that they're, that they're, they're, they're unsure on whether you even need to be baptised, right? They're, they're questioning whether you need to be baptised. They're questioning whether you need to receive circumcision, right? They don't, under, they don't understand the history of the Israelites. They don't understand Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, and who that applies to. They don't understand that God doesn't even love everybody. They don't understand that Esau is hated and that his, his destination is to be completely destroyed off the face of the earth. If he was to ask them, they don't know who the Edomites are, Right? If you was to ask them what the new covenant is, they wouldn't be able to answer these questions, right? If you was to ask them whether reincarnation is in the Bible or not, they wouldn't know the answer to that. But then at the same time, they want to try and tell people stuff about the Bible, right? And in the span of a week, their whole doctrine will completely change, man. So really, they should just shut their mouths and just learn the Bible. But a lot of these people anyway, the, the, the black people have a problem with us saying that the so-called white man is the devil and they're saying that the so-called white man is the Edomites of the Bible, right? And sometimes you try and stay spiritual. But a lot of these so-called white people that you see, all of them are Edomites pretty much, right? It's, it's not like there's just because there's one person that among Esau that's going to be an Israelite, that means that you have to start treating every single one in a nice way, man. We try the spirit by the spirit, but most of the time it's always revealed you people are the Edomites, man, and you don't really believe in the Bible. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 15 and verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draw of nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. So here it is, these things are getting ready to happen on the earth, but you've got people questioning certain chapters and, and authenticity of the Bible. Either you believe it or you don't. Here it is, the Bible's been established for a long time, man. The Bible's been around longer than everybody else on this earth. But you've got some people thinking that they're just going to magically magically stir up something and and, re, and reintroduce a doctrine that's going to that's gonna make people receive salvation. Man, you're not going to do that. I don't know who these people think they are, but they're not going to do that. And there's many people that are on these false doctrines out here, man. And then if you, if you was to really start saying, you know what, then all right, this person's telling the truth. And we should start trying to see what they're saying. They even got, they even got answers. Whereas the apostles of Great Millstone, they've got answers for every single verse. So why are people going to stop believing the doctrine that they've been teaching that's lasted decades and that you can see the effects of these things taking place on the earth? Why are people going to stop believing that and go and follow these people that are questioning whether Paul was a whether, whether Paul was a, was was telling the truth or not, or whether Paul was a man of the Lord? People that are why why would they do that, man? A lot of these people don't know the Bible, man, and the Bible is not for Edomites anyway. So a lot, of, a lot of people that are reading the Bible, that are heathens, they shouldn't even waste their breath because it's not for them. Verse 16. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another, and they shall not regard their kings nor princes in the course of their actions, shall stand in their power. So all of this is going on. But you've got people that are thinking that they're somehow going to come come through and chain and, and like reintroduce a new doctrine. They're going to make a new doctrine or they're, they're questioning and they haven't even got their whole doctrine together. And what they believe, man. And like I said, you try and stay spiritual sometimes with these people, but really, you're already thinking, you know what, this person's the devil, man. And then they they expose it to be true, man. And we don't have to we don't have to tell you to answer none of you people's questions neither, man. We don't have to. And the day is gonna come where all those people that are, that don't are unsure or questioning the Bible, well, you're gonna have to stand on what you believe in, man. If you think that, if you think that. The, uh, the MOTB is something that Paul was talking about. Well, you believe that, right? If you think that 
if you think that the MOTB is a so-called white woman or is the Christian church or is Christianity, well, you believe that then. Well, all that's going to mean is you're going to take that device in your hand or in your forehead and get destroyed, man. Because you wasn't of the elect. It's very simple. You've still got people, like, there's a lot of people out here that still believe that salvation's for everybody. But then at the, at the same time, they're trying to think that they're deep. They're not deep, man. They don't even understand understand the milk verses in the Bible. They don't even understand the simple things. They don't even know what their, the person that they're claiming that their saviour is. They don't even know what his name means. They don't even know what his name means, man. They still think that God's name's God, a lot of these people. They don't know nothing, man. Yeah, you have to be humble and accept that you don't know nothing. And if you're saying that you don't know nothing, well, then you shouldn't be trying to teach other people because then you're just destroying them because you ain't even got it yourself. Verse 17, a man should desire to go into a city and should not be able, and this is taking place right now. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. And there's many people, man, that they're unsure about the Bible. But as soon as they learn one thing now, they want to try and make out like they have just been knowing these things for a long time. And that's stupid to do that because all that's going to end up happening is you're going to end up destroying yourself, man. You're going to end up destroying yourself and you're going to end up bogging out, right? And you're going to end, like, he, a lot of people think that when they think they've got a question on the Bible, as though they're the first person that ever had that question. There's been many people before in the past that wanted to try and question things. They start off with one thing. Oh, what? But Paul, it, sang, it seems like this, it, spe it seems like Paul changed the Bible. And then the next thing you know, they're saying something else. And then the next thing you know, they're saying something else. And then the next thing you know, they're saying something else. And then another thing, and then another thing. And then eventually, it just gets exposed that really they didn't believe in the Bible. And they were just trying to, there was just some Edomite trying to infiltrate and trying to, trying to be all up about the Bible. But really, it's not for Edomites, man. Well, I, I'll tell you what Edomites have got to be worrying about. They should just believe in the Bible alone. This is what Edomites have got to be worrying about. Let's get this. This is Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So you Edomites shouldn't be starting to question the Bible. And I've seen many people, man, they're starting to try and question things in the Bible, right? They're trying to put their, they'll change up their whole topic of what their channel was about and start trying to dive into the scriptures, right? But then it's not for them. All they've got to worry about is they're, the slavery that they've got coming to them, man, for what they did to the Israelites. They've got to worry about what, what's coming, what judgment's coming to them, for what they did to the Negro, the, Le the Latino, and the Native Americans. They've got to worry about that. They shouldn't be worrying about the Bible, man. It's not for them. All their role is on the earth is to be wicked and do wickedly. But they want to try and pretend that they're about the Bible because they know that the Bible is important. But the Bible is not for them, man. That's not their gift. Their gift's the sword, man. Let me go back to this. Can't believe these people, man. They, they actually really think that their that their the the doctrine to to receive salvation is not already in the earth, and it's been waiting for them to them to wake up and start revealing things in the Bible. Second Thessalonians chapter fifteen and verse fourteen again. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and the destruction draweth nigh. And one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city, and shall not be able, for because of their pride the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. So this is the stuff that's getting ready to happen to these people. But they want to try and make out as though they're supposed, they're going to change the game, and they're going to like reinvent a whole new doctrine in the world. That's not what's going to happen, man. The world hasn't been waiting for you to for you to all of a sudden start reading the Bible and, and start teaching the truth, man. It hasn't been waiting for that. The true doctrine's already been out here, man. The true doctrine's already been out here longer than I've been alive. Never, never mind waiting for somebody else to try and wake up. And that's going on three decades plus that the truth's already been out here, the true doctrine. But now you've got all these people that are trying to play catch up but then at the same time as they're trying to play catch up and at the same time as they're trying to learn from people that have learned from those teachers, they're trying to introduce other things, man. They're trying to introduce their own things. And that's why we always say 
salvation is only for the Israelites and in particular, salvation is only for the elect and, in, and definitely salvation is not for no Edomites, man. And it will always be revealed who's an Edomite and who's not, even if it's a tear, man. Let me read this, because all these people that are coming, coming with this, come with this, come with this BS, man. Like they don't even like if you was to really ask them certain questions in the Bible, they wouldn't have the answers, man. They're unsure. They're unsure of a lot of things themselves. And I'm not even on about. I'm not even on about deep things like prophetic books, like Revelation, like the Book of Daniel's, right? I'm on about just normal things, like normal scriptures. Like okay, how many sons did Abraham have? Right. What does it mean in the scriptures when it says the seed of Abraham? What? How, how was how was the Messiah part of the seed of David? If you start asking these people some of these questions, they won't know the answers, and they might know some of the answers, right? But they won't really be able to give you a proper doctrine on the Bible, man. They'll they'll still be uncertain about certain things themselves. So really, what these people should just do, if they actually were sincere, is Google. GMS apostles and learn but these people are not sincere and they just want to have power over somebody else and want to try and try and teach somebody else but they don't even know the basic things themselves man and that's the way of an Edomite and and just to say this as well Edomite isn't no spiritual it's not no I'm spiritually an Edomite no it means you're a descendant of Esau and you're going to be completely destroyed off the face of the earth man if you're an Edomite you're going to be destroyed man and before that this complete destruction, you're going to be going into slavery for a thousand years under the Israelites. Not no Israeli, not none of that stuff, under the Israelites. This is Amos chapter 8 and verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to leave the word, to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. So here is the, the true doctrine has been out here right now. But you've got people that are trying to ask you questions, learning from you, and then trying to, trying to teach you at the same time. That doesn't make any sense. They're trying to ask you questions, trying to learn things from you, and then at the same time trying to teach you. And that's what happens to the apostles all the time, man. You're... A, the apostles will have people asking them some bogged out questions, right? And then the apostles will ask them a question and they'll stumble. And then they'll say, the, the apostles might say something like, um, what does this particular word mean? And then they'll say, what do you think it means? Because really they don't know what it means, man. They don't know. They don't have the answers. But they want to just heap, heap, heap students unto themselves and be the teachers of many. But they don't even, they haven't even learned the truth from the people that are teaching it. But then they think that they're just going to be able to learn it at the same time as teaching it. And it's ridiculous, man. And very proud, man. This is Amos chapter 8 and verse 11 again. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the west. They're going to be looking all over the place for the word of the Lord. From the east, they shall run to and fro, to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it, it's not going to be there because the internet's going to is about to be getting locked off one day. The internet's going to be getting locked off soon. That's why you're seeing all of these things where people are abusing the internet, right? People are people are using the internet to to show their crimes that they commit, and eventually they're gonna be like, you know what? This can't. This stuff's bad for bad for the world. We need to monitor this, and we need to make sure that the algorithms stop people from being able to even do these certain things. We need to make sure that people have their IDs on there. So that we know exactly who's who that's posting anything on the internet. All of this just getting ready to happen, man. All of it. Verse 13, in that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for first. So any, anyone that ain't got the truth right now, right? And they've stumbled upon the people that are teaching the truth, right? They're not questioning the authenticity of, of people that are mentioned in the Bible, right? Because if you're going to question, here, here's the thing, man. The Bible, right, is a book of faith. And what does the book of Hebrews say? The Bible is a book of faith, man. So the moment you start questioning one person in the Bible, or how do we know this, how do we know that? Well, then, how do you know, how do we know any of it, man? Really, if we're being real, how do we know any of this stuff that's in the Bible? Because we have faith. That's how. 
as if we need we we need a time machine to go back and see the Israelites on Mount Sinai or something like that. find this this is Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so we're hoping to see how we shy right that's what we're hoping for we ain't we, ain't, we and we believe in the name of Yahweh shy we don't believe we don't believe in no in the one that begins with the letter J. We don't believe that. That's some heathen name, man. We don't believe in that. It says it in the book, but we don't believe that that's the name because we understand that that letter J is a new letter in terms of in terms of in terms of letters. It's like what four hundred plus years old only, and we understand that the Bible was originally spoken. All these things that were said, all these statements, would have originally been spoken in Hebrew. We understand that, man, and we have faith in that name. We have faith in the name of Yahweh. We have faith in the name of Yahweh Shai, but we don't have evidence. We don't have true proof that that's the way you say the name. Just like how none of these other people have proof that that's how you say the names neither. But they're going to believe on the name that they've got, and we're going to believe on the name that we've got, and we're going to see which name's which then, aren't we? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 again. Now, faith is the sums of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And a lot of people have got questions on faith. A lot of people have got questions on uh, whether you, whether the law is done away with or or they want to say uh, whether you have to keep all the laws or they want to say whether we're under grace. But then if you really look at and examine these people, they're not keeping all of God's laws. So they better hope that it's about some kind of grace because they ain't keeping all of God's laws and they know they're not. For starters, they don't even know all of God's laws to know how to keep them. They don't know it. But then they think that they're supposed to come and change everything around. And you can see why the apostles get so angry, man, and why they become why why they become so aggravated. But then at the same time, they have seen all the all the every single type of bug out anyway, man. So it's more so people that are younger in this thing that are gonna be the ones that get aggravated because they're just newly seeing these people that have got such pride and bugged out views on the Bible when they don't really know nothing, man. They they don't really know nothing about what the Bible is talking about. They don't know at all. This is Amos chapter 5 and verse 8. In fact, you know what? Let me go to this scripture first. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 13. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. So if you if you want to start questioning the Bible, right, you want to say, Okay, so people start my a lot of times people start off with Paul and they say, How how do we know Paul did this or how do we know Paul did that? Right? And then the next thing you know, they're gonna be saying, Okay, but why can't I eat pork? Because it tastes nice. The law has been changed. They they'll start they'll start they'll start saying whatever it is that they need to say to make whatever loss that they have within them come to pass, man. But if you read the Bible, it explains that Paul's letters are hard to understand for those that are unlearned and unstable. And it's definitely unstable if one minute you're questioning one thing in the Bible and then all of a sudden you're trying, you're trying to question another thing but then you try and pretend as though you never question it. Yeah, to read the Bible, you have to be humble, man. Because how it can jack, can jack you up, man. And like I said anyway, the Bible is not for Edomites, man. It's not for them. It's not for no Edomite. So an Edomite trying to read the Bible really is a joke. They want to try and question people that Yahweh has chosen. This is Psalm chapter 50 and verse 16. But unto the wicked Yahweh saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee? When thou sawest a thief, thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frame of deceit. So your tongue is going to lie, right? So eventually you're trying to pretend as though it's one thing that you had a problem with the Bible. But really, you have a problem with Paul because Paul said that a woman's not supposed to teach in a church. And really, you want to just you want to just be running up, running all up and down 
women's batty or right chasing after women's batty so that so that you can try and make out like oh you're 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 the new savior when you're not man you you're not the person that's gonna have you're not the person that's gonna have the the true doctrine that re- that's gonna receive the salvation man you you don't even know it yourself you don't even know it yourself man you're trying to make out as though you've just got it all together and you don't even know it yourself to be able to teach anybody else there's several things that you haven't even heard of heard of before that's even in the bible but you want to try and question you you, you haven't even learned everything properly and don't even have an understanding of everything in the bible but then you're at the same time trying to question authenticity of certain things ridiculous psalm chapter 50 and verse 16 but unto the wicked god saith what hast thou to do to declare my statutes or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee so everything that every single person every single prophet in the bible wrote if you don't believe that that's God's words that God inspired these people to write, right? Well, then you're casting the words behind you. If you think that one that one book in the Bible has managed to somehow be corrupted and still put in there as doctrine, right? Well, then you're, you really are casting the words behind you because the scriptures are clear. It says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So if you're going to question one thing in there, well, really you're questioning everything because if you're going to question what Paul said, Right, but then you start being like, okay, I don't like that, and then you're gonna say, okay, but how do we know that that the Messiah turned water into wine? I don't believe that he died and came back alive because how comes nobody else has been able to replicate that since? Oh, I don't believe that he was a so-called black man because these black people that I see in this world, they don't look, they don't, they're not, they're not holy, they're not righteous. I don't believe that he could look like that because those people over there in that land. They don't look like that, and but they, but they're saying that they're the people. That's what eventually is going to happen, man. And then you're going to start questioning another thing and another, and then you're going to think that you know what? I need to rewrite my own version of the Bible because I'm going to get it right. I'm going to change. I'm going to start from Genesis one and one and work my way all the way up to Revelations. That's what you're going to end up doing, man. A lot of these people that they, they don't really care about the Bible, man, and to think that you're going to somehow and there's many people that do this, man. There's many. They think that they're somehow going to start all of a sudden becoming so deep beyond, beyond the sun and telling everybody everything about what's in there, man. And that's not what's going to happen, man. It's not. It's really not what's going to happen, man. John chapter 7 and verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So you're supposed to believe on the scriptures, on, on Yahweh Shai, as the scriptures have said. But if you're going to be questioning one thing in the Bible, then eventually you'll question another. So you'll be like, well, when it says in the book of Revelation, his head and his hairs are white, right? And this is one, this is the way I bogged out Christian will break this down. Let's go to it, man. Let me go to it. This is Revelation chapter 1 and verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the patch with a golden girdle. Now here's how a bogged out Christian will break this down. Verse 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool, and they'll say, see, he said his head is white. He said his head is white, right? As white as snow. See, it says as white as snow. But find me a person on this earth that's head, as in the skin on their face, is white as snow. Find me that. But can you find somebody in this earth that's hairs as white as snow? Yes, you can. Yes, definitely. Right, and now here's where what else I say. And his eyes was a flame of fire. See, that bit symbolic. Right, that's what they're trying to say. And then verse 15, and his feet like unto fine brass. So, they'll, so then they'll say his head was white, right? <laughs> but then his feet are extremely dark brown. You're a bug out if you say that, man. And really, you're just a racist, right, that doesn't want to believe the scriptures, man. That's what it that's what it really is. You're just a bug out that doesn't want to believe the scriptures, you're a racist, and you couldn't possibly think that the that the Messiah could even ever possibly be a so-called black man, man. You don't want to believe that. And there's many other things that I could say, man, but I'm just gonna end this lesson and do another one on another topic, man. Like a lot of you people need to just go into into what you're really about, man. A lot of you people are really some devil worshippers and stuff like that. Trying to fake like you're about the Bible, man. Just go and be and be on whatever you're on, really, man. 
this wicked world will accept you, man. And I'm going to end the lesson there. All praises to Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham Makakwadash. Double honest to the passing the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalawam to the elected nation of Israel. Shalawam.